Okay, so I'm gonna while you're doing that, while you're pulling that up, I'm gonna remind everybody that we are actually uh, engaged in a game development series where we're taking an endless runner, we're taking Zigzag Boom, and we're breaking it down into its parts, and then we're going to rebuild it, almost like uh, the Six Million Dollar Man. We've got the we have the technology, and we're we're going to uh, show you all the steps. Last couple of uh, hangouts we were actually talking about the, the requirements and kind of the planning and how the project was uh, organized so if you haven't seen those go back and watch those hangouts I think that started out with uh, hangout 128 129 something like that so go over to youtube.com slash corona geek and check out those videos uh, and then today's conversation is really going to be about uh, laying down some code and putting in the walls and starting the, the coding process is that I'm sorry. Yes, my, my my audio is on. Exactly. So last week I promised that we would get to walls, and I I gave a hint that making walls is actually the most complicated seeming part of the entire development. You would think it isn't, but I think the big problem that people are going to run into is that when they go to create walls, first of all, what are we talking about when we say walls? What I've got here on the screen is a couple of screenshots or a few screenshots, and to remind people the way this game works is, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, the left image here is the starting screen and this little dot here is our character and we have a hallway in a sense that moves up and to the left and when we start the game the character is going to start moving up and to the left then if we tap the screen the character will change directions from minus 45 degrees where zero is up and down to uh, positive 45 degrees. So we tap the screen and it basically goes left or right depending on where it was currently going. And our whole goal is to stay inside of the hallway. So the tricky part here is, is you would think that drawing lines at 45, basically what is lines at 45 degree angles would be straightforward. But there are challenges. The first challenge is, is to you can draw a single line, but if you want to draw two parallel lines that form a nice hallway like this with good good corners and a little glow effect and a nice colored background, it's not as straightforward as it seems, especially when you want to introduce uh, physics and collision detection. Uh, another thing that makes this difficult is uh, after you get all that working, you need to set up your initial screen so that it looks like this. What you want is the first hallway to be very long. You want it to be centered on the screen so that when you put your player in, in the center, which is where he starts or it starts, it's in the middle of the hallway. So I experimented with a bunch of different techniques. And what I settled on was um, sort of a... Some of the techniques I tried were drawing lines. Now, you're not supposed to. You're, people always tell you in the forums, don't use lines for anything that you want to have um, collision detection on because while you can create lines and add physics bodies to them, the results will always be somewhat arbitrary seeming. They're not arbitrary, but you really have to understand the rules of how physics bodies work when attached to a line. And there, there are rules. So I did that first thought maybe maybe I could <clears throat> experiment and show pe people how to do that, but that did not work out. Then I tried uh, New Polygon. So there is a more recent um, display object called the Polygon, which is you can create a multi... Uh, what is the... multi-vertex object. So typically objects in Corona have four vertices. They're rectangles. Four sides, four vertices for the corners. A polygon can have four, five, six, seven, eight vertices to create an arbitrary shape. So I experimented with, just for fun, using an arbitrary shape to create the hallways. That also did not work well. It didn't work well because we ran into, I ran into the same problem, which is once you put the physics body on, then you really have to understand the winding, um, the shape, the orientation, et cetera, et cetera. So long story short, <clears throat> I settled on the good old uh, new rectangle or new image rect, depending on which way we want to approach it. They both come out to be the same. They produce a rectangle which can be rotated, positioned. You can apply a body to it which will have the same size as the visual parameters so there's no extra work. And let me just start walking you through this. So before you, before you do that, I, I just want to 
I, I work best if I know kind of like visually, and then and then I get into the code. So you're showing us the screenshot of the Zigzag Boom, which is the app that we're using as a model. Uh, are you saying that this will be composed of rectangles? Yes. So if I, at the end of the day, what we're going to have is a hallway that has. It's probably a little bit hard to see my cursor here, so let me zoom way in. Um, it's going to have a wall like this mm -hmm. on either side, which is the part that your body will collide with, your character will collide with if you don't turn. We will create a little fake glow effect and a background so that it distinguishes itself, looks a little bit different from the, the entire screen, which is a darker blue. Okay. And I'm okay. going to walk you through this step by, step by step so you understand sort of the logic of how I, I approach this. All right? Okay. Okay. Thank so, you. So uh, before I do that, I just wanted to point out that last week I showed folks the different modules. Um, and one of those modules was layers.lua. So it's really important for people to understand that when you want to create ordered layering in your game, where you always guarantee that one object will be on top of some other category of objects, for example, let's say I want to display a background of one color, then I want to have my hallway, and then I want to display my player. But I always want my player and all the particle effects to be rendered over the top of the hallway and the background. Now one way to do that is to put them all in one display group and then do m magical heavy lifting to ensure that they're always sorted correctly. That's the wrong way to do it. The right way to do it is to create a bunch of display groups and then organize them in such a way that one display group is on top of another one and then when you create your background you put it in the group for backgrounds when you create your hallway you put it in the group for the hallway and when you create your player you put it in the player group and then the sorting vertically top to bottom bottom to top as far as how you look at the world is always handled for you there's no thought involved so I have created, and we're going to come back to this again and again, because um, when we start talking about cameras, probably next week or the week after, we're going to talk about how we can use display groups to create a camera effect. And I won't go into too much what a camera effect is, but the camera effect that we are going to achieve sometime in the future is the player, when it moves, will always seem as if it's staying in the center of the screen, and the world will move around it. So the way you do that, in a nutshell, is put the player in one group, put the other contents in another group, and move the groups around, and then reposition the player every frame so that the player gets rendered in the center of the screen, and everything else is moved sort of the opposite direction the player was moving. It'll all become clear next, next week or the week after. Okay. So, so back before, to layer. Before you go on, uh, yeah, but I have a question about the layer. Okay. Uh, so when you add, let me just make a clarification, or you you know get you to get you to make a clarification. Sure. When you add objects in Corona, they they, they follow a, a pattern where if the first one that is added is um is is the is the bottom layer, I guess you could say, and then and then when you add something else, it gets added on top of whatever that is. So if you're going to lay down a background image, and then you could lay down a player, and then you could lay down whatever else right and then they would be stacked on top of each other so are you are you so you're saying that you shouldn't normally do it that way or that things should be put into you these should layers not rely or? upon that you should understand that it works that way mm -hmm. I'll, I'll explain why okay, okay. Um, first of all you're correct um, in corona if you don't make your own display group ever there is still one display group that is created for you. It's called the current stage. The current stage is sort of like the master display group that contains everything in your game, all the rendering, all the display objects. So if you don't specify a display group when you create an object, it's put in the current stage. Mm 